Okay, first things first, we'll talk a little bit about supplies and materials here. Uh, in today's basket, I'm going to be using a piece of driftwood. One of these guys will be acting as my handle. Uh, I have a Dremel and a drill. You could use just the drill if that's what you have on hand. Uh, I like to drill my pilot holes with the Dremel if I can. Uh, then I also have some 11 64ths flat reed, some number six, and number seven round reed. That's gonna create my ribs and my rim. Uh, then I also have some number, this is number two. I'm just gonna use this color actually as a contrast so you can see the different steps. And then I also have uh, just a bunch of natural uh, number three round reed as well. So those are the pieces we're gonna start with. I have got the uh, number seven currently soaking because first things first is getting uh figuring out just exactly where we want this this handle to sit we're going to be creating a frame that uh, looks a little bit like this this is all driftwood out of lake superior but this is step one in this particular uh small egg basket so um kind of doesn't really matter which piece of driftwood uh, this one just has a really fun curve to it so i think i'm gonna set the other guy aside for now and we'll go with this one and uh, the way I see it, it's gonna hold as a handle, sort of like that. So what we're thinking about now is what's, what's the top? How is it gonna hold in your hand? Which way do we want our rim to run through the outside edge here? And so in this case, two things to keep in mind. One, there's a bit of a knot on this end. And also we've got a few chunks of, of uh, bark on here, which can, which can stay, it's not, it doesn't matter, it adds a little texture. Um, but this end is the heavier end, so this one's going to weigh a little bit more. So I want to keep that in mind when I decide where I'm going to put my, um, my holes. I'll leave a little extra uh, ha wood hanging over on the lighter end just to try and balance a little bit more. So first things first, I like to drill pilot holes with my Dremel, or, or a small a drill with a smaller drill bit would work as well. Um, but just looking at this in terms of how's it gonna, how do I want it to sit? How do I wanna hold on to it? So top down here, keep my fingers out of the way. There we go. Just reach the other side there. Okay, so now I've got one hole drilled on the heavier side. Uh, that guy's a couple inches in. So on the lighter side, same thing. Let's think about this. This is just going to be used as kind of a sample. I'll use the red one so you can see it a little bit better. Thinking about making sure that your rim is all on the same plane. So if this guy is going to sit here, you wanna make sure that you don't drill the other one at an angle this way. So you're gonna to wanna to keep it upright so this is still on the same flat plane. So from that perspective, I'm gonna move this end in a little bit. Okay. There we go. Drill that guy straight across with my Dremel. Okay running low on battery there. Anyway, you can see the drill, Dremel belt goes through both sides. Now this is gonna cause a lot of your dust. This is the biggest mess. And typically, when I'm drilling, I try to measure up, uh, your end drill bit needs to be the size of whichever piece of reed you're using. In this case, uh, the drill bit I'm gonna start with is a little smaller than my number six round reed. And I actually am gonna use seven on the top rim, which is approximately this size. Typically what I do, and you can tell these are the ones that get used a lot. This guy's got a little rust on them. Um, I, I drill out with two or three different sizes um, so that especially driftwood is a little inconsistent. You might end up with a soft spot or a hard spot, um, but different sizes will help you with the drilling of this. This works with antlers uh, as well. So we're gonna go ahead, follow those pilot holes. At the top and the bottom, that bark did decide it wants to come off, so we'll take that off. Uh, other side, too. Okay, so we're getting a little bit bigger in our holes, but still not big enough for the number seven. I want to just use something a little bit stronger. Now, 
if I didn't have enough room to get this drill bit in, if the, if the drifter wasn't wide enough, I would use the number six round reed and um, uh, I wouldn't get any bigger on this hole probably. But this one, th there's enough space here, so I'm not real worried about that. Um, drilling that guy out just a little bit bigger. Okay, there's one of them. There's the second one. Now, I've got both of those guys drilled out and they are big enough to accept my rim material. Uh, like I said, in this case, I'm using a number seven round reed. So this guy here. Now, my favorite way to do this is to feed through one end, uh, feed through one end and give it a little bit of an angle. This end is gonna come around and get tucked in your first hole. Now, when I did these baskets for classes, we kept them fairly small. We had just a finite amount of time. So I'm gonna do this the same way. Really just eyeballing it in terms of the size that I wanna get and the shape. And I go around twice usually. In this particular case, I'm gonna tuck my, um, my wrap on the bottom here. It'll sit really nicely in that groove. So, I got quite a bit more here than I need, so I'm gonna cut that down. Okay, so now we're actually gonna twist this, wrap it around so much. And again, here in the bottom, I've been soaking this partly so that I can do this, so I can manipulate that willow, or that, sorry, hold itself in place. This side you see is getting a little bit wide, but we'll fix that when we get over here. All right, keep wrapping that around. Now I'm coming out on the bottom, kind of checking my shape here. So now I'm gonna cut this other guy right underneath the top. Okay. Give that one, set that aside and give this guy a little angle. So what I'm actually gonna do, figure out exactly how long I want that one and give him the opposite angle. Okay. Pull that one back around and then just a little bit of wiggling here. This guy comes out a little bit. The other one can go in a little bit further. Okay. Now, we'll even up our loops. And now we're checking to see if we got approximately the same size on both sides. So one thing about these baskets is since we're using the driftwood for a handle, there is a little bit of inconsistency uh, in the actual shape. So what we're looking for here is really balance. It's not going to be exact. Um, you can measure this if you want to get a, a, um, a ruler or a tape measure out. Just give it a look. I want to cut this one down, I think, just a touch more. Okay. So now, okay. See, this guy's going to slip up. He's just going to keep moving a little bit until we're ready to start weaving which is okay. I'd like to give this a chance to dry just a touch. Okay. So while I'm doing that, I'm gonna tie this one down a little bit. A twist tie or, or a clothespin or something will work here too. Now, the next thing I wanna think about is uh, my center rib. Um, in pieces like this, I like to add the center rib and make that a little bit more permanent. So I, again, am looking at the inside of this and going, all right, exactly where is my center point? Where do I want to weave this at? And how is it going to balance? So scooting that over just a touch. Okay. Okay. There we go. A little happier with that. Now I'm going to look at this again and say, all right, where is my center of my of my driftwood here. Turn that dremel down a little bit. And again, I'm gonna drill another pilot hole just inside the rim. And one here, just inside the rim. Okay, can't turn that off upside down very well. 
Uh, and then I'm gonna go back with uh, my drill bits and you can, this, this is just one little hole, so I'm actually gonna just use the bigger drill bit for now and go slow. Okay, so there's one hole. Okay, there's the other hole. So now we've got one opposite the other. And I'm gonna go back with my damp number seven round read and measure that guy out. Now, as a beginner basket, sometimes it's a little easier to do something with a slightly more consistent shape, um, but we wanna make an egg basket. So we do wanna try and add uh, two distinct lobes on this piece. So we're not making it real tall at this point. This is gonna be a little first step in rib baskets. So here we go. A little bit too long, you can see it's making a kind of even that out so it's kind of sitting the direction you want. That's actually gonna be the center rib to this entire piece. And it's gonna end up sitting just like that. So that guy slipped out while I was working with him. And so what I actually will do at this point is use this gel glue. Once I find that I've made these the height and length that I'd like, I'm gonna make this one a little smaller just so that it's not as big around as my as my rim. Get that shaping in there again. So aiming for a nice U shape on the sides. Okay, we've got a little bit of a twist here, but that's okay, we can fix that as we're weaving along. But that is step one. Just gonna glue this guy into place. This is a super gel or super Glue gel control is what it says from Loctite. It's my favorite glue. Um, I use it quite a bit. I do a lot of work with antlers and, well, and driftwood. Um, so a little bit of that in there, not a lot is necessary, but we'll stick these guys in. All right, get that set. And then I'm actually gonna go and cheat a little bit and put a little in this rim too, just to make sure it stays right where I want it to. Just a little couple drops in there. Get him in place, okay. And then as this dries up, I am going to grab my other materials. Okay, here we are starting with our finished rim. And I have been soaking some number three round read. Unfortunately, I've got some that's got a little bit of snapping to it lately, even with the soaking. So we'll do our best, but I'm gonna start by taking the end of my number three and tucking it just between the top two pieces of my rim. And I'm just gonna give it a nice tight wrap so it's up close to the handle. So I'm coming around on the inside of this rim. I'm gonna go in front of my middle rib and pull this reed back down inside the basket basically so it's coming from the inside and I'm gonna wrap that handle again this time twice now you don't have to wrap uh, your handles twice when you go around or your I'm sorry I keep saying handle around your top rim um, it's just a look preference uh, I usually do that just because that's my personal taste uh, but now I'm coming back down around the front the outside uh, of that rim and then I'm going inside my middle spoke so what I'm starting to do here is build what's basically gonna be a pocket that holds um, what we're gonna, what's called the ribs, the other the pieces that build up the framework in this basket. So the process here is to do both sides. So I'm just gonna double wrap that rim, coming back around behind the middle double wrap my rim again and I'm basically holding my basket upside down at this point you could flip it over which is fine if that helps your your um, thought process uh, some people do better if they're facing uh, the way the weave is coming down so remembering to not weave on uh, your handle here uh, unless that's a uh, you know again you could do a design element you could do an x over the ends or a wrap in the middle to make it smoother that sort of a thing um, but otherwise, right now we're just 
basically weaving around three points. The rim on both sides and your center rip. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep weaving this until I start to build a pocket. Now that pocket is gonna be built on here. We're gonna actually start with four spots in this particular piece. So we're gonna start on both rims and then alongside that middle rip. So what we're looking for is a space that's big enough to slide that reed in and hold it in place. So really, if I just do this a couple more times, I can switch to the other side. So just gonna continue wrapping. It doesn't matter which way you're holding this upside, you know, as, as, as I'm looking at it here, I would definitely call it upside down if you're holding it the other way. Now I just have a little bit of reed left here, about a two and a half feet or so. So I'm actually just gonna build this pocket just a titch bigger. See that guy's getting loose, so I'll just tuck him back in tight. Okay. There. So right now my pockets are big enough. So what I'm actually gonna do is just clip this guy off. There we go. And you can use clothespins if that's what you have handy. I just happen to have some little alligator clips here. So I'm gonna let that tail hang for now. And I'm gonna hop back over and do the side we started, the opposite side from where we started. So what I'm trying to do is at this point, go back and forth from side to side. Uh, so again, we're gonna repeat the same beginning. I'm going to tuck my reed in between my two uh, rim pieces here. This one's got a little bit wider gap just because my wood is wider here, but that's okay. So here I've got my first kind of one half wrap and then a full wrap coming back from the inside. Now I'm gonna go over the center and it does look a little bit funky at first. Sometimes you can squeeze that in and sometimes it doesn't go. Uh, back up around to the outside of this rim and I'm gonna wrap it again, okay? At this point, I'm, you'll see I'm on the outside of the rim. So I'm gonna take my reed and tuck inside. So on the inside of that center rib, we're just gonna start building those pockets again, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna double wrap here. I taught this class I think seven or eight times in the last couple months. So I have been making, you know, a plethora of this exact same style and shape. Um, so forgive me if I miss something, I am happy to answer questions. If uh, you wanna message me, please do so. Oh, got stuck on my wheel. Oh, I got a crack there. Okay. I had a little crack on the end of that reed just a brittle spot. So I'm just gonna tuck him inside there for now. Cut off the crack portion. And since I'm just at the beginning stages, all I'm gonna do is tuck him inside that hole. This is only if you have a break, don't worry about it. I, that was just a little snafu. So wrapping around the rim, watching that I'm on the outside. So moving to the inside. Now I'm coming back out again. So coming from the front on, on uh, the opposite side of the rim, double wrap. Okay, and so my goal here is to try and get, uh, give or take, I don't ever count loops. That's, you know, not something I ever take the time to do. You can if you want to, but they don't have to be exact. Uh, one of the nice things about a driftwood piece like this is it's kind of, looks more appropriate with a little bit of a rustic flare. Oh, I ran back on a stubborn side of that rattan again. So I'm gonna cheat again, tuck my brake inside there. All right. Well, sometimes you get a piece that just keeps breaking no matter how well it's been soaked or mellowed. And quite frankly, at that point, um, I just set it aside for a basket that doesn't require quite so much wrapping. Wrapping asks, asks for a lot of flexibility from your rattan. 
And like I said before, I do believe that some of the rattan has been getting just a little fussier than it used to be. A little, maybe the quality's a little different or something, I'm not sure. See, there, it did it again. This guy's kind of cut him back here so we're not in the same spot. But I've got two places now where he's popping out. Okay, so anyway, we're gonna move on because this piece, Oh, it's got a little flexibility left in it. Okay, so I ended that guy down there. I'm gonna give us one more wrap on this piece of reed and then we're gonna find a better one. Sometimes going just a little more slowly helps. That. Tighten that down. I'll do an over and under here again. Okay. And I'm just about to the end of that piece of reed. So I'm gonna take it back around and just tuck it in. And now any of these extra ends and things you can come back and trim now or you can trim later. But we've got approximately the same size pocket now. Okay, now I have woven the same amount uh, or approximately uh, on both sides of my basket and I am ready to fill in this gap uh, to keep my basket nice and solid. Oops, I dropped that one. So I am actually going to just trim this one off for right now. Um, he's gonna get tucked inside because we're gonna add some spokes, but in this step, we are actually gonna switch to 3 16 flat read. Oops, I dropped. There we go. Okay, so step one is going to be to add my other ribs. So again, I have a spline cut in the end of that, a nice, really nice deep angle. And I'm going to go right inside of my, between my second and third spokes. And honestly, you can add this to either side. I'm gonna actually add it into the, into the first set of spokes. And then I'm gonna think about how long do I want this rib to be. Cut that so that the cut part of the angle is leaning up against the rib you want it to rest on. Okay. So this guy is giving us a bit of a square corner, which in this case I kind of like. I think I'm gonna leave him there. And we're getting to about two fingers per spoke on here. So we're only gonna need one more set of ribs. Always try and do two ribs at a time if you can. Um, some more abstract pieces, maybe that's not gonna happen. But in a case like this, uh, you wanna keep your weave pattern fairly consistent and you'll end up with less kind of jumps in your, in your weaving. So my goal here now is to try and get this guy to match up to his partner on the other side. So here's our middle. That's the permanent one. We added one on either side of him. Now we're going out one more and adding another. Oops. Lost my grip on that guy. So now we're adding two more ribs this cycle stuck there so I'm gonna tuck inside and give him a little room come on there we go obviously that guy is significantly too long so first things first make sure that one's all the way in the pocket and since this side is less less flexible than the other I'm gonna go back here to measure and Really not a lot more off, actually, because I'm giving him a little extra length. Okay, there. Now, 
I've got one, two, three, one, two, three that I've added on either side of the center. Keeping an eye that this guy is actually gonna move a little closer in there as we're weaving. So that's our goal. This is gonna be the top of our basket. Now, don't worry if it doesn't sit yet. We can definitely tweak that a little bit as we're getting to the bottom. And sometimes adding the round reed will make a difference too. So, oh, nobody pointed out that I did that wrong. That's why it wasn't sitting, right? Okay. Try and add your spoke on the same side. And sometimes you wanna roll it over just to see what your lengths look like. There we go. Okay, so we are ready. I'm gonna add this. This is 11 64ths. Again, you can go 3 16 You can go, um, once you get to about a quarter of an inch, uh, any turn backs are gonna get a little bit chunky. So what I'm doing right now is going into the end of my reed because I'm basically taking it down to the size of the round reed and just creating kind of a long taper. Because when you use new pieces of flat reed, you're gonna do an overlap. But to start, we're basically gonna treat it like a round reed. Now, we've reached the part of our basket where one of the things we really wanna keep an eye on is the fact that say our center, our rib, center rib here, uh, is significantly shorter than say, you know, two and three on either side of it. And we need to fill up that extra space. So here's the middle, you probably got an extra inch here, even two inches here to get even to this size. So we are not always gonna want to weave our center rib. We're gonna do a little bit of switch back and back and forth kind of a thing. So uh, first things first, I'm just gonna take my, my tapered end and I'm gonna tuck it inside here. So I'm just laying it alongside of the weave that I was doing with the round read before. And then I'm just tucking that end right behind a spoke. So it's kind of staying there. I'm gonna to have to hold that as I weave for now. Um, you'll see in this case, I'm coming up on my new rib right before I get to the rim. And I'm gonna actually start weaving him in on his own right here. I prefer to add a new weaver or a new rib in my weaving. I pick it up on the way towards the rim and then instead of on the way towards the center, I just like the way that it sits a little bit better. Um, again, on this side, I usually double wrap, but I, this is again a much smaller section to weave than the center. So we're not always gonna have enough space to do that. So in this case, I'm only gonna do one and curl over and start coming back again with my weave. Okay. Same thing on the other side. I'm gonna incorporate that new rib in. And I am just doing an over and under all the way across. Keep them tucked up really nice and tight there. Now this one, I have a little bit more space. It wanted to tuck in a little more, so I'm actually gonna do a double wrap on that side. It does not have to be exactly the same both ways, but there are some important pieces to see here. Right now, I've woven over one, under one, I'm sorry, under one, over one, under one, and I'm coming up on that middle. Now is an opportunity for me to fill in some of this extra space. So I'm actually going to fold this over and turn back. And in this particular case, I'm only gonna turn back one, here's the first one, second one, third one, and then I'm gonna turn back again. So what I'm doing is filling in some of that space, the extra length on these ribs. And then you try and keep this close so I don't have as much of a gap if you're watching that gap in here where I didn't weave. So I keep that real close on the center rib. And you see that? I'm just filling it a little bit. So now I'm gonna do that on both sides. One, two, three. I'm skipping the rim this time. I'm turning back before I get there. 
okay? And then back to one, two, three. And then before I get to the center, I'm gonna turn back, keep everything pushed up nice and tight here. And then I'm gonna weave all the way back to the rib. Here I have the opportunity to tuck underneath the turn back there a little bit, so I'm gonna do that. And since I wanna hold everybody nice and in place, I'm gonna do a double on the outside. Now, over top, and keeping this nice and close. So you see, I've just doubled my weave in just that section. So now I can weave a couple of rows all the way back and forth. I'm trying to keep this nice and tight so I'm filling those holes. It's really important that you don't weave too much of the rim where you end up with a gap here still and no place on the rim or you end up with a really large um, wedge at the end. So, all right, there we filled in those spacers on both sides and I finished out the row both directions. So now I'm probably gonna give it another, oh, actually I'm gonna do another wedge right now. I can see that I really got a lot of extra space there. So going into that third spoke, one, two, three, I'm filling in in here. I could go to the rim if I want. Actually, in this case, I think I will. I'm gonna go to the rim, just one wrap. Keep pushing that up nice and tight. And sometimes it's not gonna work out so that you do the same amount on both sides of your basket. So I'm trying to tuck it under this fold just a little bit, okay? And same thing this direction. This time I'm gonna go all the way to the rim. Double wrap just to catch up a little. You don't want this to be too far in from your weaving. So sometimes that will take a double wrap to get you where you wanna be. So I'm gonna go in one, two, three. Fold. Tuck that fold in a little, right? Next to the previous weave. Okay. One, two, three. I'm gonna do a single on the rim. Now these are all gonna change depending on the exact shape and size of your basket. This is just a technique to keep in mind for filling in some of those gaps. Okay. All right, so we're making some progress. You see I'm doing a little fold over here, overlapping just a little bit in some of these spaces where I have gaps before. So that'll just keep, that'll minimize those and just keep them a little bit smaller. Now you see on the end here, my weave's coming out here and my wrap is in there. So I'm gonna pull this in tight, fill this in with a double wrap, and that will level all of that end out. Okay. Keeping an eye on the space. Now, okay, I still do that right there. One thing to keep an eye on is if your spokes are getting longer than it than the, its partner than the next one over sometimes you end up with a gap and you might have to wrap your your rib instead of just passing under it so we'll see if that comes up and i can show you that how to cover that gap too so i am running to the end of this weaver but i want to go over and jump over to my other side so see here actually i can show you this right now See, if you go from this spoke to this spoke, there's a big spongy here. There's a gap because the, the reed doesn't come down here. So in that case, you actually wrap all the way around so that you don't end up with a weird spongy gap here. And actually this sort of disappears into your weave as you move on. So I wanted to get that example in there so you can see it. Uh, this one I might, I'll probably have to do on the next turn. So there's side one. And just to give you a little hint, I'm gonna start you on side two, but you see that I've moved up. The middle here, I've got about three inches, or two, well, probably two inches. And, the, and then on this longest rib, I've got three inches of weave. So that's what our goal is here, is to fill in that space. So that once we get to the center, we have a fairly consistent um, channel to fill in. 
So next step is to go over and do side two, same exact way. Uh, and then I will come back on and uh, do the finish. Okay, now I have woven up the second side, similar to where the first one was. Not quite, it's a little bit shorter, but um, if you look straight down into the basket, you'll see that there's still a little bit wider ribs here and here than across the rest of the bottom. So that's our next goal. But first of all, it's time for me to add a new weaver. And since we're using flat reed now, we're gonna do what's called a four spoke overlap and that helps keep your reed in place moving forward. So if you look here, I've got just a little end sticking out where I wrap that spoke. I don't like that. Um, we're not, we don't really have enough to do an overlap on this end. So what I'm gonna end up doing is going back and cutting that weaver back where it's laying just on the outside of a spoke here, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is weave right alongside it exactly the same way as the one I'm replacing. This is just a, a kind of a cheap way of doing it um, because what we're actually trying to do is weave one on top of the other. And so if you weave them side by side, you can just slip one over the other one if you look right there. So what I'm gonna do is tuck the end of this underneath one, two, three, four, this fourth, this fourth spoke. And then this is going the opposite direction. One, two, three, four, the one that the, the previous weaver ends on, I'm gonna weave on top of him so that when you get here, both of those ends are, are hidden and they're being held in place by the other spokes. So I can just weave right directly on top of that previous spoke. And now I'm back to that same gap because the spokes on either side of this middle are just much shorter. And so we've got a little wrap that needs to happen here. So just gonna give him a full turn all the way around that longest rib. So he's got a little bit of a wrap right here. And then I'm just gonna continue weaving. Okay. Okay. Now we're going on top next to him, so that's gonna stay nice and tight. Make sure that this rib is touching. That one's doing okay. Same thing here, pull back. And let's see where we're at. Uh, looks like we could do one packing set right here. So I'm gonna go up. one gapping yep so that guy needs a wrap he's gonna probably need a wrap all the way across the bottom every time we weave underneath that spoke and then I'm just gonna go one more and we're gonna do our turn back here this is a slightly hairier piece of reed this time just a little uglier but we can burn some of that off at the end too so one, so I went to the to the one, two, third spoke, and I am coming back to the rim. Right now I'm just giving that rim a single. See that first row I did a single. Second one I'm gonna do a double so that my rim is at the same distance in as my weave. And we're creeping up on middle from this direction, so that's okay. And I'm gonna go do a little packing on the opposite side. Uh, yep. Give this guy a wrap on the way back. Still a little too gappy for my taste. Okay. I'm gonna kind of keep squishing those together so they're tight. Okay. Get a little overlap there if I can. 
take out some of the take out some of that gap anyway. What I might do is wrap the center, even though he doesn't have to have that, just to help tuck that reed up underneath the previous row. This guy needs a wrap. See, my rim is slipping a little bit there, so I want to make sure to I'm going to double wrap next to him, just to keep him all nice and tight again. Okay. Now we're going to pack here. This guy needs a double wrap because he's going to have a big gap again. So wrap him all the way around. And actually, this rim is a little wider on this end, so I'm going to go all the way out to the rim this time. Okay, now we're really closing that hole up in the bottom. Do a little overlap there. Same with this guy, try to tuck him under. So what I'm going to do is finish out this weaver. Oh, we got a brief break in that one. Okay. Well, that guy's going to finish back here then. So there's another weaver we added in. That guy's a little longer than I want. Okay. So side two. I'm going to cut back. So that I'm ending on the outside of a weaver here, or a spoke, I'm sorry, wrong word. And same thing we did on the other side, over under with that four spoke overlap. So those two are stacked one on top of the other, and then keep weaving this direction. Uh, getting gappy, so wrap around that one. And actually, I don't need to go all the my way to my rim right now because I can see that my rim is getting a little narrower here. So let me go back and do this first. One, packing over those three different ribs in the middle. And this guy's gonna need a wrap. He's longer. Okay, now I'm gonna pack that pretty tight in here. I'm going back to my rim. All right, I'm gonna pull underneath that guy. Try and do a little overlap here. There we go. Oh, this side looks like we're keeping pretty straight. So keeping an eye on our width. This rim actually is a little wide. one last time on this side.
Okay, so we've gotten some spokes wrapped up here. We've packed that all in, so we have pretty close to a consistent width all the way through the bottom of this. And so now I'm just gonna continue on from the side that I'm weaving and basically keep going until I can close up this hole. Okay, I am closing in on the bottom of this basket and it's time to make some decisions because we don't want to end up on side-by-side -side rows that match. And we do have extra ends sticking out here from both sides that we're gonna have to work together on. So, first things first, I'm gonna squeeze in one more row here but i am at some point going to have to come back and account for the fact that the row coming from the other side ends right here so first thing i'm going to do is fill in my rim and It's a little trickier in here just because it's tighter. So you see now I'm adding a row, but he's really tight. And the question is, do you want to squish this as much as possible or do you loosen him up? Uh, I frequently err on the side of squeezing in another row if possible. Uh, I like to have everything kind of tight, nice and tightly woven in there. Well, what's gonna happen is that I end up with the perfect end gonna end up with every other row like I want, but I'm gonna end up with one butt end hanging out here that is not accounted for. So, we're gonna have to go back and bury that one in. I still need to get down to this end. Okay, so wrapping this rim here. I'm gonna tuck that around again. We're getting really nice and tight. Which is just what I want. I like to fill that in as well as I can. But now, you see what's happening. This is the previous row. So I'm actually going to go alongside that weaver I'm gonna follow him for a little bit. This guy is longer than the one that's in there. I could cut him off, but it doesn't really do me much difference either way. So I'm literally weaving on top of the, and the last weaver coming from the other side. And let's see. I want him to end on, a on, on the outside of his spoke, which he does. More, just a titch more okay now we're here I've got this rim completely capped off I think I could probably squeeze another one in if I want but I don't need to now I have absorbed that end and now I'm down to just one get that wet now I'm just down to one weaver to finish with so I've got them nice and wet. Let's see, do I want to squeeze this in here? Sure, why not? I'm going to squeeze that one in there. And I'm just going to come out at a bit of a diagonal. Right there. Wiggle him in so he's on his own. And we're going to take that same trick we used before. I don't want three bundled up on the same pile here. But I can take them down and cut them off to tuck underneath the spoke. So she's gonna go over, under, 
And then this guy's got a knot and I'm gonna pull him right inside there. And that knot will hold him in place. Now, we have ourselves a little egg basket. The one thing you're gonna see with some of this reed now is that it's got a lot more of these little fuzzy hairs and things like that. Let's see. So, my absolute favorite way of taking care of these is with my blowtorch. Hopefully there's enough fuel left in that guy. Oh, maybe not. There we go. We got some fuel in there. So the key is keep your basket damp and keep that torch moving. And that will burn off some of those little stray. And they'll eventually fall off or you can cut them off with, with the shears. But this takes care of a lot of that quickly. Lately, I've been seeing people use a flameless uh, match type thing, flameless lighter. Um, I don't really care for the tediousness of that because it's each, each little hair you have to go and kind of zap independently. There we go. You can go on the inside if you want, less important probably. But I like to get those edges so they're not scratchy. That's got a bit of an extra. There, turn that off. And this is our little finished egg basket. Just like that.